It's been a torrid start to the season so far, rocketing to the top of the table through the first six matches. Will we continue on our winning ways and build a nice, comfortable lead? Or are we going to give the opportunity to the opposition to catch up? And a very happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to episode number 23 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. We are top of the table after six matches. 16 points after, well, we drew our last match, but we won our first five. Will we go back to that form or will our current form continue? That is still to be decided. We have a nice six-point lead over Halifax and Pacific. Halifax with a game in hand. They just picked up a 2-0 victory over Valor FC. Pacific is at home against bottom of the table Calvary FC, but we've got Atletico Ottawa in fifth place right now occupying one of those playoff spots if we can beat them and then put together a nice run of games it's going to look like a fine season and we are gunning once again for the number one seed in the playoffs which hopefully we don't bottle for the second year in a row and against my better judgment after that penalty kick he took which basically sealed our fate in the canadian championship against the vancouver whitecaps mo farsi is going to get the start as our right back. He'll be joined on the other side by Zorhan Basong, a back three of Elanabi, a Botna, and Gifrard with George Marks in goal, of course. Simmons and Johnston manning the midfield with Verhoven at the 10, Ria Zansev, and Didier as our strikers. Hoping to extend our unbeaten streak to 10 matches, which would be a team record. It's our 100th game in charge in our fledgling career. Can Billy Flynn pick up a victory and go to nine points ahead of Halifax Wanderers and hopefully Pacific FC because I hope Calvary FC is going to be able to do us a solid and pick up a victory in this one. We are going to be in the black. Atletico Ottawa is wearing the red, and I'm hoping we don't run into the same issue we have run with recent live commentaries where there's just not a lot of action going on. And as I say that, we are blessed with a kickoff highlight as Orhan Basang steps in front of the pass. Gets in the middle. Ria's on Sev. Up ahead for Didier. Carrying it up the left wing. Dropping it. Basong in the middle. Simmons quickly. Ria's on Sev. Finds Didier who finds the bottom corner for his fourth goal of the year. Except the flag is up and it will be offside. Showing some beautiful flashes of brilliance early on in this match. Mo Farsi picking up Didier. He's got a man in the middle. Instead, he's going to lay it off for Bessong. Bessong, Didier getting in a little bit of traffic with each other. And Bessong's drive from outside of the box is, well, it's wayward. In fact, they're enjoying 75% of the possession for through the first 22 minutes or so. Bessong, not a great uh, corner delivery. It's a little short. And it's cleared by Atletico Ottawa, but we are in control once again. Mo Farsi through the middle will drop it back to Ria Zonsev in a deep position. He's going to look to go and charge into the box. Simmons finds El Anabi, the outlet back to Noah Abotna, flipping it forward, looking for Ria Zonsev. Fashionary deals with that, and Coupland looks to send Ottawa the other way. Del Campo back for Coupland. He's got two men on him. He is able to find Twardek on the right wing. The possession numbers still continue to go up and up and up for Atletico Ottawa until a bad pass is picked off by Isaiah Johnston. He's charging ahead. Can he get past one man? Carrying it deep. He'll drop it back. Mo Farsi in the middle. He's got Alan Didier with the sitter. That's his fourth goal of the season. We thought we had it very early on in this match. We were wrong, but Alan Didier was like, well, you thought I scored a goal. You already know that I'm about to score my fourth. I might as well. Do so now. And 23 minutes in, it's Atletico Ottawa nil, Vancouver 1. And as the moments wind down in the first half, we actually find ourselves in a unique position where we are leading on the scoreboard, but trailing in essentially every other statistical category. So Atletico Ottawa, while they have enjoyed the majority of the possession and the shots, they have been unsuccessful, and it's going to be an own goal. Matteo Campagna. Mo Farsi throwing it on net. You miss 100% of the shots that you do not take. Well, he was going to miss that one too because it was going to go wide. But Campagna was like, don't worry, bro. I got gotcha. you. Isaiah Johnston involved in the play once again. He has been one of our most active players on the pitch this uh, early going in the season as we enter the half 2-0. Only two shots on goal. We actually have to do much better than that. We're not going to make any changes as we look to start the second half, but goals by Didier and the old goal, own goal from Matteo Campagna 
have been the difference in this match because honestly, Vancouver FC has not made the difference for themselves. Very interesting as we hit 20 minutes remaining in the match, Atletico Ottawa has changed their shape to resemble ours. We're going to bring Ryan Beecher in as our striker. Javi Bula is going to take the place of Noah Verhoven, who is just gassed. He's been playing a lot. The aforementioned Isaiah Johnston, he's going to get a blow as well as Matteo Giovanni is going to come in. So we're going to make three changes with 20 minutes left. But yeah, they have gone to that 4 3 one, two, or whatever you want to call our formation. I call it a four, three, three still, even though it's kind of inverted, a little bit weird. You know what? I'll take it. We've been doing very well with this. Nice ball through to Hobby Bula. In the middle, Ryan Beecher, and he tucks it inside the near post past the diving keeper. Summer's missing an interception, and with 13 minutes left, that's going to be the nail in the coffin. Two super subs coming in. Hobby Bula, Beecher are hooking up. Great pass by Alan Didier through three defenders. That's the ball that Summers should have gotten. Instead, Beecher able to slot it home. Nothing really Ingham could do about that. And even though this has been a rather unimpressive performance by Vancouver FC, the scoreboard will tell otherwise. The 3-0 absolutely flatters us. I will be the first to admit it. Ottawa with 16 shots on goal, 7 on target. As we have just a couple of moments left, it's going to be a final third throw in for Bassong. He'll get it back from Simmons quickly. Shivani over for Farsi. Beecher will turn, fire, and score a brace. Are you kidding me? Another assist for Mo Farsi. Well, I don't think the first one really counts as an assist on the own goal, but Mo Farsi making the play, finally saying, all right, coach, I've given you enough golf with this. I want to leave. Me being unhappy, me playing like doggy do. I'll actually give you a game. And 4-0, that absolutely flatters us because Atletico Ottawa really dominated this match in most ways. Now, we did claw back some of the possession numbers. We ended up 52-48 in favor of Ottawa. There's 16 shots, though. They did only manage the two on target, so that probably is really what the difference is between us getting the goals and... And them not. We only managed four shots on target and four goals, but only three shots on target. But it's weird. I, I'm not going to explain it. I'll take the three points. Yeah, Mo Farsi did get credit for two assists. A 9.3 rating, won 100% of his tackles, completed 30 passes, which, I mean, 76% isn't great. But he wins man of the match, which I just fear is going to make him even more insufferable. So even though we had managed to run our unbeaten streak to 11, it was three draws in our last four, things were looking uninspiring as Vancouver came in and couldn't really get anything done in the early going. Canada missing a shot. He would end up getting pulled at the half. I just felt like we were having another lackluster match as chances went a begging again. Castillo into the middle. Mohamedou came with a sitter that he clanks off of the post. I mean, we did rotate through. You'll see all of the matches we're playing today are taking place over like a two and a half week span in game so we absolutely positively need to keep fresh legs we finally did break through in the 55th minute castillo seeing i pass finding noah verhoven for his sixth goal of the year and things were looking up finally mohamedou kane a beautiful ball alan didier sneaking behind the defensive line chipping the keeper for his sixth of the year figuring well you can't be at the top of the scoring sheet. That's my job. A couple of late chances on, off of the set piece. Palmer, header hits off the post. Hanusi feeding Mo Farsi into the box. His shot will be tipped wide by the keeper. But ultimately, we did do enough. Not a lot of chances for Halifax. In fact, really nothing in that second. Really nothing after the first five minutes of the match. If you look at the XG chart, absolute flat line meanwhile we managed to come alive in the second half pick up a very valuable three points as we beat halifax two nil hoping to run our unbeaten streak to a lucky number 13 as valor fc came to town and at least we found our possession boots our scoring boots however not so much i mean we certainly had opportunities verhoven from the edge of the box on a set piece just couldn't get it over the wall giovanni in for riazansev played out Simmons and Riazansev off of a deflection, but in for his second goal of the year. And finally, we are on the board. It only took about 25 minutes. But other than that, generally a sloppy game. Best chance of the match 
for Valor FC came on a couple of corners that they just could not find the target. Verhoeven sending it across. Castillo can't get his head on it. I mean, it wasn't the sexiest of wins, but I will take a 1-0 as we continue on our winning, tying, points getting ways. Thought about showing you the highlights of the match against Pacific FC, but honestly, it was kind of embarrassing. We really just could not get out of our own way. We, yeah, we managed eight shots. At one point, the XG was almost identical between the two teams uh, early on in the second half. However, we just could not get anything on target. Two shots on target. They all both came early. We missed a ton of chances. Pacific FC, I thought they went ahead on a corner, but it was ruled out for off side we got very lucky there another corner they came this close to tucking inside the near post really not our best performance but i will take the draw to keep our unbeaten streak going so we took 11 games unbeaten to start the season and it was much longer than that overall to host calvary fc at the bottom of the table no problem right well william accio says hold my beer picking up his second goal of the year we had some chances Early on after that to equalize, Mo Farsi pushing it in. Johnston blazing one over the crossbar. Johnston with it again. This time he's going to feed it out to the left side. Castillo makes a move past the defender to his right. Had a lane, but he throws it right in the breadbasket of the goalkeeper, Holiday. We just really struggled to get things going in this match. So we start throwing the kitchen sink at them with 20 minutes left to go. Thought we had a chance. Ria Zonsev getting in behind the defense, but Stone stepping up and stoning him for a beautiful save. Then Verhoeven off of the free kick. Abotna couldn't keep that one down. One final opportunity as we headed into uh, stoppage time. Basong, Ria Zonsev back for Basong. Simmons sending it on and Stone doing it again. An absolutely brutal way to have our unbeaten streak. And 1-0 at home against, at the time, the worst team in the league we had opportunities 12 shots on goal eight of them on target but we allowed calvary fc to dictate the tempo of the game they dictated the possession and we need to regroup and figure out what we're going to do because this is the kind of loss that could really set us on a bit of a tailspin Luckily for us, though, we do have a nice cushion at the top of the table. We're eight points ahead of Forge FC. We're sitting on 27 points after 12 matches. We are averaging more than two points per match, which is very good. I think the playoffs are going to be a foregone conclusion, but we do need to keep our pressure on the other teams. Forge FC does have a game in hand on us, so they could pull within five after their next match. And as I mentioned earlier in the episode, all of the matches that are taking place today that you are seeing either in full or in the highlight, well, it's never really in full. We'd be here forever. All seven matches, though, taking place over a 21-day span. So we head into our match on the road at Valor FC, still eight points ahead of Forge FC. Their game in hand, they haven't played that yet for some reason. Uh, they are traveling to Calvary FC. Hopefully Calvary can do the same thing to them that they did to us. And regardless of what happens in our match, we can at least maintain that eight-point lead. We shall see. Still mixing and matching a little bit for the Valor matchup. Marks is going to be in goal. It's going to be a back three of El Anabe, Noah Botna, who has kind of been rotated in and out. There were a couple of matches there he didn't even make the match day squad, but he is going to start at the center of our back three. It's going to be James Palmer to his right. Basang and Farsi will be the wing backs. Isaiah Johnston will slide into that ball winning midfielder role. Elon Hanusi is going to come in in place of arresting Elliot Simmons. Javi Bula doing the same in place of Noah Verhoeven. Tyler Pasher going to get his first start of the season as he pairs up with Alan Didier. At some point in this season, I do want to see what we have in our new backup goalkeeper, the youngster Stuart Murray. But George Marks, he has let up no more than one goal per match. He's picked up a nice, healthy chunk of clean sheets so far this season. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this crowd at Valor FC, they play in an awfully large stadium for the number of people they get to show up. A little pathetic, if you ask me. Hopefully, we can wow them with our brilliance. And hopefully, we can find our brilliance again. Early highlight, throw in, getting it back his best song. Sending it in for Javi Bula, and he can't keep the header down. Muri Sawantanawa doesn't really have to do much with that one. But first shot on goal, first salvo across the bow, thrown in by Vancouver FC. And as we look, 
Possession numbers tilted a little bit our way. We're obviously leading in XG, although, well, that's tilted because Valor FC has managed to get off two shots on goal. Both of them have hit the target. Mo Farsi tries to get it around his man, feeds Alain Didier, pushing it again wide toward the sideline. Hanusi for Mo Farsi, taking it deeper. He's got a man on him in the middle. Hobby Bullet. What a great shot. Uh, Mura Sonawa did a fantastic job getting in front of that one. Hobby Bullet will send in the corner. He does have a short option. Tries to pick out Palmer. Not the greatest corner kick, if you ask me. Headed away easily. I mean, we just have to get better. Bunbury pushing it up the right wing. He. Did cause a little trouble in the last match against them. Johnston throwing it in from range. And that's going to be tipped wide by Marks. He really had to lay out to get to that one. That was a... Threw it and threw a lot of bodies in order to get there. Bunbury. Yep. They can't deal well with that corner kick. A little bit low for my taste. A little bit too much pace on that one as well. If you're going to send in a low corner, you, you, you can't fire it in that far there's not going to be much that your guy on the near post is going to be able to do about it 6-4 your shots on goal actually in favor of valor fc the possession slightly tilted in their favor as well but pretty much even stevens in that first half only managing the one shot on target guys we have to do better and that's what we told them in the halftime team talk our shooting is atrocious Maybe get a shot off on goal. Nothing in the first 10 minutes of this second half. And we are going to immediately demand more from our team. Because, I mean, honestly, our offensive output recently. Now, we again, we have not been keeping a set lineup. Seven matches in 21 days is just way too much. Uh, Pasher is not doing anything. Uh, Riazan Sev is going to come in. He is focused on the match. Habib Bula will make way for Verhoeven. So much for his rest. And uh, Mo Farsi feeling a bit nervous. Juan Castillo will come in and take his place. Castillo has primarily been playing on the left side, but maybe maybe he can do something on the right. Verhoeven winning it back. Basong playing it for Riazan Sev. Running into a bit of traffic. Come on, guys. Find that pass. Build-up play. I like the build-up play. As we move it into the Valor uh, third. Castillo in the box. You had one, two, three options in front of the goal, and yet you elected to take it yourself. Our guys need to learn to play the game that they are designed to play. And that shot was not the reason why Juan Castillo is out there. Four minutes of stoppage time added on, and I have a sinking feeling nothing is going to happen. And sometimes, sometimes I hate being right. Another nil-nil draw, and this is three straight matches where we have failed to find the back of the net. Eight shots on goal, only two of them on target. Possession tilted towards Valor FC. I mean, we were on the road, so you can expect the home team to step things up just a little bit, but... Really, we did not see anything from our team out on the pitch today. And it's starting to become a disturbing trend. So even though we picked up the point, Forge FC was able to handle Calvary FC. So now our lead at the top of the table is six. Forge still with the game in hand. Hopefully, we can get ourselves unstuck. We have a week off. Before our next match, that is the good news. Hopefully, we can regroup. We can find our core group together. I think we're going to go back and go back to the lineup that we were running in earlier on in the season. Forget about the rotation. Luckily, our match congestion is going to ease up just a little bit as we move forward. Hopefully, this week off, we'll do our team some good and we can find our winning ways and especially our scoring boots again. If you like that, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you have not done so already. If this is your first Mr. Cellophane video, welcome in. I hope to see you again. We'll be back tomorrow with more of the American dream as we chase the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And I hope to see you then. Until tomorrow, bye-bye.